So welcome to JavaScript testing for beginners. This is day two. We're going to write your first test today. So a few things we're going to do. We're going to create a blank project and install all of our JS dependencies and ES6 dependencies. We're going to create a function to test and a test file to test it with. I'm going to introduce you to the test driven development style, which is where we write our test first and then get the code to pass it. Then I'm going to write a few different types of tests to explain how we can test. So we're going to test for different data types. We're going to test whether things are equal. We're going to test whether strings contain other strings. And finally, we're going to test for errors, which is a little bit more tricky. And then we're going to do some tidy up, which will make your test file a bit clearer. Right, so the first thing we're going to do, if you haven't already done this, is create a directory, just testing. I've already done that. And if you CD into that directory, CD JS testing, again, I've already done that. So now we need to install the dependencies so firstly, we need to create a blank npm package file. So we just do npm init minus y. That just creates us a, a basic package file with nothing in it. It means we don't have to set, set this up uh, manually. The next thing we need to do is we're going to install some of our dependencies. Now for testing, I'm going to use mocha and chai. So we do npm install minus minus save dev because they're development dependencies. They're not production dependencies. They're just for our tests. We're going to install Mocker and Chai. So Mocker is our test runner, and Mocker doesn't come with an assertion library by default, so you can use Node's um, assertion library. I like to use Chai. It's a little bit more expressive. Um, it's easier to read. You'll see as we write the tests. So I'll install both those. And then the next thing I like to do is I like to write ES6-style JavaScript. So that's things like arrow functions, um, const and let, things like that. So I'm going to install some dependencies for ES6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a Babel. So Babel is going to compile ES6 code to ES5. It's called transpilation. And we're going to install two dependencies now, Babel register and the Babel preset env. So Babel register automatically compiles the files on the fly by binding them to nodes require. So when you, when you bring in the, the other modules, it automatically uh, compiles them. And then we're going to use the preset env, which determines which Babel plugins we need. So it just makes life a bit easier. So we do npm install minus minus save dev again. We're going to install Babel register and Babel, I don't know if I can spell, Babel preset env. Okay, so now we've got all of our dependencies in our package file. You can see Babel presets and Chai and Mocha. The next thing we need to do is we need to set up the Babel uh, preset. So we just create a Babel file dot Babel RC. And in there, we just need to have our preset. It's really simple. I'm just going to cut and paste that. Whoops. So preset env. So that means we're going to run with the preset. Right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a source directory. That's where our source code is going to go. And we're going to create a test directory. And by default, Mocha looks in the test directory for our tests. So what we need to do is we need to create a module that we're going to test. We're going to call this day2.js. In our test directory, we're going to call day2.test.js. So that's going to be our test file. Okay, so day2, we're just going to have a function. We're going to call it day2. And then we're going to export it. So now we've created our default function. We need to test it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our test file and we're going to start creating the test suite. So Mocha has two interface styles that you can use. The default one is called behavior driven development. So one I personally use, um, there are two main keywords, describe, which is defines your test suite and it, which describes your test. Um, and I find it reads more easily than the TDD style, the test driven development style, which uses suite and test, just a personal preference. And it's what I've come to know. So that's what I'm going to teach you today. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in day two the function from our file, source day two. There we go. So that's going to bring that in. And then we're going to create our test suite. So we're going to just describe. And describe comes with, with two parameters. The first one is a string. So what are we going to call it? So we're going to say day two tests. It's the name of our test suite. And the second one is a function. So inside the function is where all of our tests go. And it's quite handy this because you can nest describe blocks as I'll show you a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an it. Now it is your test. So it's the same sort of thing. 
There we go. So this is our test. So we're going to describe what our test is called and we're going to des describe the function here. That's going to uh, be the function that runs it. So at the moment, there's no test. We're going to just run them. You can run them with mocker. You just run mocker there. Now at the moment, you can see we've got errors. Now the reason that is, is because I'm using the import here. Um, and Mocha doesn't know it's not using Babel at the moment, so it's using it expects ES5 JavaScript and it doesn't know about ES6. So what we can do is we can just say Mocha require, and then we just tell it we want the Babel register we we dependency we brought in before. If we run that now, you see we've got no test. One test has passed, but it has no name. So that's this this one here. So as I said, I'm going to teach you the test-driven development style. I'm going to write a test first, and then I'm going to write the code to pass it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check that undefined is returned if we pass no parameters. So we'll say should return undefined if no parameter passed. And then we can call day two, and we can check what happens to it. So we're going to use Chai's expectations now. So we can say expect day two. So the return value of day two to be undefined. Let's try that now. We run that test. Expect is not defined. So the test has failed. But this is an important point now. You need to make sure that the test fails for the right reason. At the moment, it's failing because it doesn't know what I expect is. So my test is failing, but not for the right reason. So the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in expect from chai. Okay. So if we run it now, the test passes. So why does the test pass? Well, in JavaScript, when you don't return anything from a function, it's undefined. So that's correct. So our first test has passed. That's brilliant. Very simple test, and obviously it doesn't really test anything. So let's try something else. Let's try another test. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test whether it returns a string when a string is passed. So we say should return a string when a string is passed. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to expect when we pass day two. And we're going to pass our string now. And we want that to be, uh, and we want it to be of a type. Now, JavaScript is not strongly typed and statically typed, but it does have types. So one of the types is a string. We're going to check if it's a string. So if we run our tests again. What happens? Okay, so our first test is still passing. That's great. The second one says assertion error, expect undefined to be a string. So it's still returning undefined from there. So how do we make it pass? So we've, we're saying we need a parameter. So we're going to pass a parameter through and we'll call it data. And then the simplest thing we could do here is just to return it. So we're going to return it. And we run the test again. The test passed because the data we've passed in is a string. Let's go back to that. It's a string. Um, and it's a string that we've returned. So that's great. That just works. Okay, so let's write a few more tests then. And we're going to test some more data types. So I'm going to shut that window down. Just shut, shut a few of these windows down. So the next thing we want to do is we want to test whether um, it's a number. Okay, so let's do another it. So it should return a number when a number is passed. So again, with Chime, we've got lots of different expectations. We can say day two. We're going to pass a number, we'll say 10 maybe, to be a, and there's a type called number. Okay, let's see if that works now. Now obviously it does because we're just passing back, we're just passing back the data. So let's also confirm that when we pass a number, it's not a string. So we can do negation. So we can do should not be a string when a number is passed. So we can do expect day two, 10 to not be a number. Okay. Again, we'd expect this to pass straight away. And obviously, because I've done something very silly, it's failed. It says expect 10 to not be a number, but obviously 10 is a number. What I actually meant to put in there was a string. So let's run those again. Excellent, passes as expected. So we're going to test whether the string is equal that's passed. So we'll do should equal 
the string passed. And we'll do expect day two, same string to equal, same string. Let's try this now. Run the tests. And yes, it's passed straight away because the strings are equal. So one thing to note here is that the string you've passed is exactly the same as the string that you're, you're testing against. It's because we're using the district equals, 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 equals in JavaScript. And um, one thing we should test for is what we call deep equals, which is the two objects are not the same thing, but their values are, are the same. So what we'll do is we'll do a test for an object. So we can test now that uh, should, we'll call it deep equals. That means that the values are equal, but the reference isn't. So again, we can do expect day two. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll give it an object in a minute. Um, to, and we'll, first we'll say, will it equal, does it equal the given object that we've given? So we give it an object now. Let's create that object. Hello world, a classic, and I can spell it right. So we can try that now with our tests. Okay, so the moment it passes, because our code passes the same thing back. So what would happen if we just copy, we copy the object and we return a different object back. So let's just do that. We'll do an object to sign, which just copies it. We'll copy the data and we'll return a different object back. So we're going to test it now. So as you can see, deep equals, yeah, we're saying expected hello world to equal hello world. But what we're actually saying in our test is it's exactly the same object, which, which is not. So instead, what we can do is we can go to deep equal. So that's it saying all the values inside it are the same, but it's not the same reference. So we'll try that now. Perfect, it passes. Okay, so Chai contains lots of different expectations. And if you have a look on the Chai website, you'll see there's lots of different things you can test against. So one more thing we can try is we can test a string, whether it contains another string. So we can say should contain part of the string passed. So what we'll do now is we'll do expect day two and we'll say um, hello world and to contain world, which it should. We'll run the tests again. Perfect, it does, it contains part of it. If we said, does it contain world two? Let's try that. Obviously it doesn't contain world two, so that's right. So one thing you should always do with your tests is make sure they test, they, they test pass for the right reasons. And there we go, green tests, all good. So the last thing we're gonna check is for errors. So we can test whether a function throws an error. So what we'll do is we'll pass error into a function and when we when we get the string error, we'll throw an error. So what do we need to do? Let's write a test then. So say should throw an error when the string error is passed. So we'll say expect. Now what we need to do is we need to wrap the function. So I'm going to just call it a wrapped function. And notice how we don't call it there because Chai's going to call that for us. We're going to say to throw. I'm going to tell it an error message that we're going to pass back. Going to pass, uh, cannot pass error. Okay. So when you pass error, it's going to, uh, it's going to throw an error. So now we're going to write a function. And this function is going to call day two, as we've done, but it's going to call it with error. And that is going to cause an error. So at the moment, if we run the test, it says expected the function wrapper to throw an error, which it doesn't. So what we're going to do is going to make it throw an error when it gets a string error. So we'll say if it's of type string and it's the data is an error, then we're going to say you cannot pass error. So it's going to throw an error there. So we can check for thrown errors. Let's try it now. Great stuff. That's all works. So we've now tested an error path. So this is great when you're testing your unhappy paths in your code. You can test that errors are thrown. You can test the error messages that are, uh, are given back from those thrown, error thrown errors. Right, the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to tidy up our tests. Now, I mentioned it earlier. We can actually 
nest the describe blocks. So what we can do is we can put another describe here and we can move our test inside it. So all of these here are all about types. So if I move these inside here and we'll call this describe block um, check data type. If we run that now, you see we've got nested check data types. So they're all checking our data types. And here we did something about testing equals, didn't we? So let's call these test equals. So we'll say uh, checking equals. And we'll move these two tests, which are all about equals, inside. There we go. If we run those now. We've got some nice nested tests. Checking data types, checking equals. And finally, um, we've got, oh, we've got contains. So if we put that into its own one, it doesn't really need to do. If you only have got one test, it doesn't really need that. What we'll say, checking contains. And we'll move that test into there. And finally, we'll do the same thing. We'll check for errors. Now, it's, it's useful when you do error blocks. You can do your errors all in one section. So you can set up some preconditions if you want. And we'll explain those in one of the, the later lessons. And not checking contains, checking errors and we'll move those in there perfect run all these tests now and they're all nicely nested great stuff so we've learned how to do our first test learned how to set up using mocker and chai and we've learned how to nicely nest all of our tests to make them look a lot neater tomorrow we're going to learn a bit about asynchronous testing and how to test that in the best way using mocker and chai so tune in tomorrow